Hey, this is Mitchell. I'm Tim. I'm Dan, together with Cat Copy. And you're watching E Rock Star. We are here with Cut Copy. First, I just wanted to ask you what your experience has been on this tour so far. How long have you guys been on the road? Go to five weeks now, I think. Five mm. weeks. I mean, we've been here in America for four weeks. We're in Europe and the UK a week before that. Uh, it's been great. I think we've driven across America for the second time now. So, um, yeah, all the shows have been really good. We did a tour with Black Kids, and they were really awesome to have on tour with us. And, um, yeah, no complaints. You guys played Coachella a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what was that like? It, it was really cool, like our show there was great. Um, just being there was a pretty crazy experience. You know, the, um, the look of the place, it's just so... It's almost like it shouldn't exist there. You know? It's just like a lush oasis in the middle of the desert. Be my baby. You guys have uh, come towards the end of your U.S. tour now. This is, this is, this is it. Yeah. Tonight's the last show. And then back to Australia. Yeah, yeah. And start working up our Australia tour, which starts in about three weeks or something. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> You guys have had quite a bit of success back in Australia with the release of the last record. It's debuted at number one, um, which was just nuts for us. Um, it's not something that we expected, and it was never one of our goals, but it's really awesome. Like now that that's happened, it sort of like legitimizes things in a, in a really strange way, like people that you know. Um, it's like, wow, you guys are, you know, number one. How did that happen in Australia? I mean, are you guys just getting a lot of radio play there, or Australian MTV playing your video? Or I mean, they are sure, but it feels like maybe it's a culmination of things, you know, or, yeah. rather than any any one sort of event that's triggered it. Um, our last record, you know, didn't didn't sort of appear in the charts at all. Um, and I think it's been through our live show that um, built up a lot of a lot of fans in Australia, and also things like um, you know some radio play and um, play on. TV and that sort of stuff. So how did this whole thing start? I was sort of into just buying records and sort of DJing a little bit and just, just collecting all sorts of different kinds of music. I'd go to shows with these guys and I'd just sort of hang out and you know, we thought it could be kind of funny just to sort of try and be in a garage band for a while and then, and then it sort of turned into more than a garage band. Yeah, I'd say it's number one. <laughs> and what, what's the writing process like with you guys? We just kind of workshop stuff or rehearse stuff together. and um, Like some of the songs are obviously a lot more kind of programmed, kind of studio stuff. So I'd sort of work on a lot of that, um, that side of things at home. Um, but then, you know, there's a lot of sort of more guitar driven songs and sort of textured songs on the record. And spending sort of six weeks in New York recording, we had a lot more opportunity to work together on stuff. Whereas the last record was on such a budget that we spent half a day and that was about all we could afford. So this time round, I think um, we had the opportunity to, to sort of, you know, work in more of a classical kind of band way um, at recording this album. How have you guys found the internet is, is helped cut copy kind of get global? Yeah, like things like MySpace and like all the blogs and stuff have been like great as far as getting our music kind of out there or just for any artist kind of starting up nowadays. I think like the power is more in the artist's hands. To watch more of these interviews, go to erockster.com, where you can also check out music and videos on demand from these artists and hundreds more, as well as listen to our stream 24-7. Thanks for watching.